Hello, this is Nicholas Vardy, editor of the Oxford Swing Trader and contributor to LibertyThroughWealth.com. Today, I want to speak to you about the biggest stock market bubbles in history. The year was 1998. I was managing several emerging markets mutual funds in London. My focus was on the newly emerging markets of Eastern Europe and Russia. The world was at the tail end of a go-go era in emerging markets investing. The world was clamoring to buy Russian assets, whether stocks or bonds or anything else. The Russian natural gas giant Gazprom was racing U.S. tech giant Cisco to become the first trillion dollar company on the planet. Then everything changed on August 13th, the day Russia defaulted on its debt. Major hedge fund long-term capital management had made a massive leverage bet on Russian debt. The fund had two Nobel Prize winners among its partners, but that didn't prevent its bet from bringing the entire global financial system to the brink of collapse. I recall a quote from the front page of the Financial Times from one anonymous fund manager. I would rather eat nuclear waste than invest in Russia. Now, what does this story have to do with the U.S. stock markets in 2020? A lot more than you think. Financial bubbles occur with remarkable regularity. Now, whether it's tulip bulbs in Holland in 1637 or shares in the South Sea Company in 1720 or the dot-com boom in the late 1990s, financial bubbles are remarkably similar. As Yogi Berra famously observed, it's deja vu all over again. First, all financial bubbles are driven by a compelling story. In 2020, any stock with exposure to the cloud, digital payments, electric vehicles, or the stay-at-home economy has soared. Valuations have become untethered from traditional measures. Second, the story always ends the same way. Only the names and places change. The bubble inevitably bursts. Paper fortunes go up in smoke. Today's heroes become tomorrow's zeros. Of course, the most famous financial bubble for American investors is the crash of 1929. And it offers many important lessons for today's market. History may not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. In the late 1920s, America was in the midst of a technology boom, much like today. Automobiles, talking films, refrigerators, the radio had all transformed American lives forever. The storing stock market affirmed America's economic greatness. The Dow Jones average confirmed this to the mathematical precision of two decimal points. And unlike the dirty task of building a factory, stock market speculation was simple. Homemakers watched tickers compulsively at New York City brokerage offices, and the rising stock market earned stock operators repu reputations as clairvoyant folk heroes. By September 3rd of 1929, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which at that time included U.S. Steel, Standard Oil, General Electric, Sears Roebuck, RCA, and Westinghouse, had climbed to a record level of 381.17. But the momentum in the stock market started to fade into the fall. On Monday, October 21st, the stock market began its collapse. Over eight days, culminating on October 29th, 1929, the Dow Jones Industrial Average shed one-third of its value. So the question arises, are we in a bubble today? Now, financial bubbles blow when wildly exaggerated stock stories become untethered from share prices. And by some measures, the current U.S. stock market may be the greatest financial bubble in history. Here's why. First, U.S. stocks are trading at an unprecedentedly high price-to-sale ratio. Today, 530 of America's 8,513 listed common stocks trade at more than 10 times sales. This is 6.2% of all common stocks. Only at the very top of the dot-com bubble in March of 2000 did this marked number go higher to 6.6%. In 2000, three of the top 10 U.S. stocks by market capitalization had price-to-sales ratios higher than 10, Cisco, Intel, and Oracle. Today, four of the top 10 U.S. stocks have price-to-sales ratios of more than 10. Microsoft, Facebook, Tesla, and Visa. Second, Warren Buffett's favorite indicator, the stock market cap to GDP ratio, is flashing red. The total value of U.S. holdings rose from 60% of GDP in 1990 to 120% in 1996. Today, the stock market cap to GDP ratio in the U.S. is just shy of 200%. The S&P 500 alone is worth about 30 trillion or 150% of GDP. Now, whether it was RCA in 1929 or Russian stocks in 1998 
or Tesla in 2020, bubble stocks always burst. It's not a question of if, but when. And that's a lesson that you can take to the bank.